the uh, motor supported in the vehicle. It's got a cradle, and you can see that it mounts to the original motor mounts that were in it. So this was already here when we received the car, all of this part. So we've attached to that as well as to the adapter. Now, we still have to uh, build the uh, torque aspect of this. This is just the cradle that supports the motor, keeps it lined up in the vehicle, supports the weight of it, but this is not, um, not going to keep it from twisting. So that part's yet to, yet to be constructed. And so once all of this is done, the uh, battery racks, which you'll see in a moment, are mounted and so forth. All that is um, uh, made and fit and all that. Then all this will come back out. This is all just raw metal right now. And so all this will come out, the metal gets cleaned and painted. And at that time, when we pull this motor back out, we will also take this adapter and it goes over to the machine shop and gets machine work done as we discussed in our last video where we have to remove some material from this end of the adapter so that our magic number is correct. We also need to add some holes. There's a total of three bolt holes. One right here that's below the pin. It's in the bell housing here. They just don't have one in the adapter. And two more at the bottom. Also on the uh, back side of the adapter that you can't see now, if you remember the previous video, uh, the bolt heads that bolt the adapter to the motor need to be recessed. So we're going to countersink those and get different bolts. And so that is yet to be done. Also, behind the scenes, we are um, balancing, dynamically balancing the, or we're having it done, the coupler the flywheel and the clutch. So those all will be uh, nicely balanced because the Ford is externally balanced. So that flywheel is used to balance the crank and everything else. And so they're way out of balance by themselves as we showed in the last video. So that will need to be taken care of. Um, you'll see a shot coming up of the rear battery rack. We still need to, to uh, make a, uh, accommodations for that in the rear. And so uh, perhaps we'll show you that in this video also. Well, here's the battery racks in the front, just setting in there. They're not uh, quite ready to be mounted yet. But just wanted to give you an idea of how they look in the vehicle. Doesn't look like there would be room for them. Doesn't look like there's the clearance. We were kind of joking that uh, perhaps this thing needs a, a hood scoop. But just a quick little shot of what it's going to take to contain 30 cells up here. going to show you the uh, little bit about the power steering running at the end of this video so stay tuned for that but just thought I'd give you a quick shot so we have three sections here in the center here those hold eight cells each so eight times three is 24 and then six will be right here in front there will be three across, two deep, so it'll be 
one, two, and then one, two, three, and then here we're going to have one, two, three by eight deep. So those are just set in. We uh, got all our clearances and everything checked, so forth with the hood on. Um, it's tight, but it clears, it works. So now we need to finish the motor mounts, of course, like I mentioned, and, uh, and then the mounts for the uh, containment. Uh, we got to build the ABS boxes for them, so forth. A lot still to do. This is the rear battery rack. This will hold uh, 20 cells. So 20 in the rear, 30 in the front. Now we just have to get everything else in the front that has to go in there, such as the controllers, cooling system, etc. Well, there's the power steering uh, pump. And like I've mentioned before, this normal application for this particular pump is for a 2005 Toyota MR2. We use this because it is very compact, uh, not a lot of current draw. Work, work, they work real well. So we're going to turn it on and let you hear what it sounds like. Turning the ignition on. first comes on, it's a little bit noisier than it slows down. Now, as we turn the wheels and there's a load on it, it will pick up in RPMs and also uh, a little bit of noise. Volume. And as we quit turning the wheels, the RPMs drop down real low draw, nice and quiet. Now, there's a control circuit on this that allows you to use all sorts of options for shutting the thing off completely. And uh, so you can have a switch in the dash, you can have a speed sensor, you can have a steering position sensor, so when you're going straight, it shuts all the way off. A lot of different ways to do it. but. It's a 12 volt draw, and it's such a little 12 volt draw that the effect on your range is not even worth calculating. So, and you can see it just keeps, as the, there's no load, it just keeps dropping down RPMs. It's just a nice, quiet idle. And with normal background noise, you won't hear it at all. You can hear it in the shop here. Um, we just have a fan blowing, making noise, but beyond that, uh, you, you, you just don't hear it out in the outside world under normal conditions and with the hood on and so forth. So that's uh, kind of a wrap on our power steering. Um, you can see the relay just above the uh, reservoir right there and just to the left with the uh, power brake hose going over it vacuum line uh, is the uh, little circuit breaker and so it's just wired to the ignition and to the battery so you turn on the ignition and that uh, activates the relay and then juice comes from the battery through the circuit breaker to the pump. Very simple. The, uh, the, the most difficult part is uh, sometimes matching uh, your hoses from the existing vehicle to this pump, and uh, but uh, not a big deal. Easy way to uh, uh, maintain your power steering. Now there's several other ways to maintain power steering, and we talk about that in another video.